as if you want to hear a story about a brave engineer. Now, Casey Jones was the roundest name on a six-eight wheeler. Boys, he won his fame. The caller called Casey at half past four. He kissed his wife at the station door. He mounted to the cabin with his orders in his hand. Took his farewell trip to the promised land. Casey Jones mounted to the cabin. Casey Jones with his orders in his hand. Casey Jones mounted to the cabin. Took his farewell trip to the promised land. Put in your water and shovel in your coal. Put your head out the window, watch the drivers roll. I'll run her till she leaves the rail. Cause I'm eight hours late with a western mail. He looked at his watch. David Mays here, the video bard, producing videos to inform, entertain, and inspire. And I welcome you all to my, my train room. As some of you know, I've had a lifelong interest in anything having to do with trains or railroads or whatever. I like to go ride on trains just for the fun of it. I like to read and study the history of railroading. And what, you know, learn from that. Here, show a couple of books on that subject. Here we go. Here's one here. Here's another one. Like there are lots of books available. And of course, I also enjoy building the models. As you see here, I've got a little train layout I've been working on. It's a little uh, switching layout I've been working on. Uh, here's an example of a freight car that I built from a kit that I got a couple years ago. There we go. All right. And what I want to do today is talk to you more in detail about a a kit that I built, and um, you know, and kind of talk about my experience of building it, the things I did with it, and of course something which I will be putting on this layout soon. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get board the train and hire ball on down the line. All aboard. <laughs> All righty. Here's the model I want to show off to you today. This is an HO scale model of an old wooden water tank of a style that may have been built from, say, the late, you know, mid late 1800s into the early 1900s. This is something you might find along, you know, at a factory site or maybe on a farm, you know. So find a place in your store water for later use. Like I said, this is actually bridging built from a kit that I bought years ago. The kit itself I bought at a local hobby, sh hobby shop, I don't know, probably around 20 years ago. And by the time I got it, I think the kit was already around 20 years old then. So if you look at something, the base age is around 40 years old. Again, it was, comes from a kit. Let me show you here real quick. It's part of the instructions that came with the kit. As instructions say, you know, so it's a factory water tank. It was rich based on a prototype that existed in Gold Center, Nevada, a late 19th century era you know, gold mining town. It was used at the Gold Center Ice and Brewing Company. Basically, it was a brewery. And it's typical of wooden water tanks during, the, again, the late 1800s and early 1900s. And if you look there, got a photograph of what the kit would look like. It was built pretty much straight out of the box, as you know, the instructions show. The company that made the kit originally called uh, Frontier Replicas, here you go, uh, Fountain Valley, California. I think it was a you know, mall train company. It was active, say, mid-late 70s, early, early 1980s. And, you know, basically, I guess some, you know, somebody had it running out of the garage or some similar situation. But I think that company actually did make some other kits, but right now this is the only thing I'm aware of, plus a uh, woodworking tool that some people still like that apparently was very popular at the time and people still seeking out. Anyway, um, like I said, this is originally built from a kit that I've had for a while. It's a case where I bought the kit on a whim that it sat on a shelf for, I don't know, several years. Then looking for something to do, found that I still had it. I so, said, hey, let's go and build this. The actual, you know, construction started out, you know, building the, the base here, the, the supporting framework for the tank. And I did that over a little period of time and sat back on the shelf for a while and then here last summer said, hey, let's go and finish this. So that's what you got here is, of course, the finished product. The way I built, built, the, built the kit, the way I built this thing is started out putting together all these bits of wood right here. This is basically, you know, strip wood. Probably made out base wood. Uh, here's some examples of some pieces from another kit. And, of course, you also buy this stuff separate if you want to kind of do your own scratch building, whatever. But the kit, you know, itself just was basically a box full of, you know, wooden pieces that then came back and cut the cut the length and glued together, mostly using, uh, you know, wood, you know, 
wood, you know, yellow wood glue. The way I built it, of course, it originally started, I actually painted all the wood pieces first. Most of the paint is uh, kind of a dark gray craft paint, cheap craft paint you find at Walmart, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, whatever. And basically painted each of the pieces, then went back with a piece of paper towel and kind of wiped some of the paint off where it dried. And then came back and painted it again using a, uh, a wash made again from some white paint, white craft paint. Again, been watered down. And some of this I actually came back with some watered down black paint. It watered down even more. Get kind of get that wash, get the the uh, weathered effect. And then actually a lot of this wood, I then came back with a little wire brush and rubbed it over the wood, give kind of the get down back back down to that gray layer, give give the heavily weathered look. So the effect is of something which you know, if I guess maybe was built maybe around 1904, 1905, and it's still in use say by the mid 19. Or mid to late 1940s. So, in other words, whoever owns this, a farmer or some, you know, used a factory, it's a case where, yeah, it's showing its age, but it still works. It still does its job. So, nobody's going to really worry about how it looks as long as it's still, you know, holding water. And, again, yeah, start out, built the, the support structure. I also built the wood, the platform that the tank sits on. The tank itself is, again, wood strips glued. To Alongside of a piece of uh, papered tubing, it looked like something may have originally been used to hold a receipt paper for a cash register. Again, it weathered the wood, you know, glued it onto that piece of you know cardboard tubing, and then it went back and cut some strips of paper, you know, just some you know typing paper somewhere, and then painted that, that painted the paper a dark brown color, and then glued it on there. So the, the, the color represents, you know, say, old, old steel strapping that's used to wrap around the tank and help, help hold it together. So, especially, you know, when it's got water in there, you want to make sure it doesn't leak. Where I changed from the, from the uh, original kit, I did something different with all this uh, superstructure up here on top of the platform. If you remember that photo, you grab it. You look at how I originally did it in the, uh, the kit. The uprights, let me do this. These uprights here, to me, look kind of weak. I mean, it didn't look like they were strong enough for the real hold up the roof. So I decided to do something different. Basically, I came back and made this superstructure out of some uh, strips of plastic. Here's here's an example. Some right here. This is produced by a company called Evergreen Scale Models. Basically, it's little strips of you know styrene plastic, which again you can buy in these packages like this for doing various craft projects or hobby projects. And picked out some sizes that I liked and just glued it all together using, you know, styrene cement. Then after the glue had dried, I went back again, got some of that gray craft paint, painted it on there, made it, let it dry. I think I may have actually, a lot of that plastic went over it with some fine sandpaper, give some uh, tooth, some texture that the paint could stick to. Again, painted it with the gray paint, came back in with some of that white wash, and also again some of the black wash to give it that weathered effect. Then the, the roof itself, I again made that out of some sheet plastic. Again, same company, Evergreen Scale Malls. As a side note, there's other companies that make similar products, so there's nothing special about Evergreen, other than I just like their product. If we turn this, if you can kind of look up in there on the roof, you should be able to see some of the rafters. Again, that's some more of that strip plastic. Uh, the, again, the roof itself is made out of sheet plastic. I then went back and painted it, again, kind of a white color. It was already white, but, you know, went over some more of the craft paint, and then went back with a black wash to give it a more weathered effect. There we go. And what then did something different with the roof. The original roof, uh, the kit, if I built it as it was shown in the you know, instruction, this would have been made out against some wood strips. That's how, again, I want to do something different. So rather than go on all that trouble, I covered this over with some material that kind of looks like corrugated sheet metal. Now that's actually paper. If you hold, rub your finger across it, you can actually feel how smooth it is. That is actually paper that's had a design printed on it so that, you know, from a, you know, short distance, it looks like, again, yeah, corrugated sheet metal. It's been out in the weather for a while, so you got all the streaks and stuff and other things. Uh, a company may called uh, Paper Creek Malls originally made this like 10 years ago. I don't think they're in business anymore, but you can still get the products and go... And there's some other companies now on the market that produce similar 
products. Again, the printed, you know, printed paper designs. There's even some websites where you can go and download photos people have taken of the side of buildings, you know, brick buildings, wood siding, whatever, and print it out, and then may just play with it a little bit in the computer, get the effect you want. There's actually articles I've read where someone would go out with their camera, again, take the the take a photo side of a building that they just like the way it looked, the coloring, the texture, whatever, and again, load that in the computer and play with it a little bit, and then able to print out, you know, the the textures, and then use that to make, you know, you know, big buildings for the train layout. And like I said, you know, I mean, if you look at it real close, you can see it's paper, you know, it's flat. But from a couple of feet away, looks just like the real thing. And a lot of people, that's good enough. You know, save a lot of time and effort too. Get, uh, glued the paper to the plastic sheet with just, you know, again, some more of the styrene cement. Just kind of painted this liquid cement on there and then stuck the paper down on top of it and it stuck right together. Uh, up here at the very tip, tip top of the, of the roof, is a uh, final or lightning rod if you prefer and the way I made that you know you see them turn that so it makes it easier to see that little brown square in the middle the tip of that is actually the end of a toothpick that I just cut off you know I had drilled a hole through the inner center of the roof stuck the toothpick up in there glued it in place came back with a little bit of paper around the edges you know to represent flashing and then came back with that dark brown paint you know give, give you know of some weathered metal. Down here at the base, the base itself is one, I made that, the, the kit did not come with that. That's actually a piece of scrap paneling that I went back and kind of cleaned up a little bit and painted it some dark brown color. I then came back and put, basically in effect, painted on there white glue and then sprinkled on dirt onto it. And of course once the dirt, once the glue dry, of course, glue, the dirt stuck on there. Also, came back with some scenery, scenery material, which is actually made of out of ground up foam rubber in different colors. And the, the trick there is you may you probably paint in some uh, some glue down on there. You might water, well, you know, just plain old white glue, might water it down a little bit, kind of just spread it on there and then come back and sprinkle that uh, foam rubber on top of it. And then the other trick would be, to make sure it stays on there, is come back with a bottle, of, you know, a little spray ball of just plain water with just a dab of dishwashing soap in it and just spray that on there until it kind of gets, gets saturated. Then come back with some white glue that's been diluted with water, maybe approximately half and half, and just dribble, dribble it on there. And so when it's dry, you know, it still looks like it's loose, but in fact it's all glued down together. It's not going anywhere. And you can kind of come back and put on layers. I mean, original first layer was the dirt, then I came back with some fine ground up foam rubber, and then I came back, back with some more foam where it was a little coarser grind in different colors to represent weeds and plants and other stuff that might be growing there. <coughs> the tower itself is sitting on some uh, what look like concrete blocks. Okay. So, you know, have it sit on those right hand, you know, the post direct, stuck directly in the ground because then you have issues with rock. The concrete blocks themselves are made out of little pieces of wood. I think it's uh, balsa wood, cut that to shape. Paint it appropriate color. Do that. If you look here in the center, there's a pipe right there. That's you know supply pipe for the water. Apparently in real life, a lot of times what we do is you actually have a pipe in a pipe. And I think the way it usually works is the inner pipe would be supplying the water. You know, just pump the water up into in the tank for storage. And then when they needed the water, they open a valve somewhere, and the water then flows out through the outer outer pipe to where it's needed. And the idea is of course you're using gravity you know to help provide the, the pressure help keep the water flowing. Got a little piece of brass tubing on the end of the wooden dowel and just suggested some sort of a you know pipe fixture down there. Again a little piece of wood down there a hole grill, drilled through and painted you know concrete color. The uh, the wood blocks like I said the concrete blocks made out of pieces of pieces of wood and, and I'm assuming here they're concrete and older installations probably would use some cut stone but same idea keep the wood away from the from the dirt and apparently the way they actually hold the post in place is they actually have some sort of a large steel metal pin or spike in each block and then they drill a hole in the end of the wood post and just set the wood post on the end of it and that's what helps hold it in place other detail I added to this did not come with the kit but it's something added 
Not sure how I can see it here. If I look real close, you can actually see that between the legs there's some metal rods going between them. And the idea is those were, let's say, were applied when the structure was originally built, provide some reinforcement, keep the legs from spreading. The, wire, the rods themselves are actually just brass wire. I just, you know, cut, drilled holes through the legs, stuck the wires through there, put them, glued in place with super glue, and came back with that dark brown paint. If you look real close, there in the end, there's these little, in the photo, in the, in the picture, it may look like just a little dot, but let's actually look close, that's actually a little plastic casting that represents a nut bolt wash and washer that was used to help hold, keep the rods in place. Again, you can buy those hobby shop, order them offline, online, whatever. Uh, one of the other things added, got this ladder here. The kit came with materials to make a ladder. But I already had this ladder from another kit that was left over, and I just decided to use that. It's like, you know, hey, I got this perfectly good ladder, just use that rather than going through the extra work. The ladder itself is plastic, but again, it's been painted to represent, you know, old wood. And, of course, it allows someone who needs to, they can climb up the ladder, check on the condition of the tank, and then we're done, climb back down. Anyway, there go. I'm going to turn this so you can kind of see the sides. That's, I can think of that as the front. Let's go around here. There you go. There you go. That's the quote-unquote back side. And here's the other side. All right. I uh, hope you enjoyed seeing my water tank. And I enjoyed putting it together. I've already worked on some other projects. Don't have a place for it on the train layout yet, but I mean, I've got this factory I'm planning to build for use on my little switching layout. And I'll probably you know put the put this next to it. You know, trying to you know source of water for whatever pro manufacturing processes they got going on. All righty. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little trip down the line where I had a chance to tell you about this, this water tower that I'd made. And hope, again, hope you enjoyed the, the, the story. I will be make sure this goes in a special place on the layout soon. In the meantime, I invite you to hit that like button or thumbs up button below. Give us that little, you know, little vote of confidence. If you're for real dairy, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I got a bunch of other videos I've already posted, of course, which I'll be posting more soon. I do have some plans for some more videos where I get more detail of things I'm doing with the train layout, even how I do some of the uh, build some of the models, do the scenery, whatever. And if you're real daring and really feel generous, go to that little link down below where it says uh, www.coffee slash the video bard and click that and go to the website called uh, coffee.com. It's spelled K-O-F-I. It's a place where you can make a little contribution to help me with making more of these videos. Anyway, again, I hope you enjoyed the trip, and we'll be doing this again soon. In the meantime, train's pulling into the station, and we wish you all a good day. <laughs> so that's all for now. We'll talk to you later. Put your head out the window, watch the drivers roll. I'll run until she leaves the rail. Cause I made our late with a western mail. He looked at his watch and his watch was slow. He looked at the water and the water was low. He turned to the fireman and then he said, We're gonna reach Frisco, but we'll all be dead. Casey Jones gonna reach Frisco. Casey Jones, but we'll all be dead. Casey Jones gonna reach Frisco. We're gonna reach Frisco, but we'll all be dead. <laughs> At the Reno Hill, he whistled for the crossing with an awful shrill. The switchman knew by the engine's moan that the man at the throttle was Casey Jones. He pulled up within two miles of the place. Number four was staring him right in the face. He turned to the farmer and said, Boy, you better jump, cause there's two locomotives that are going to bump. Casey Jones, two locomotives. Casey Jones, that are going to bump. Casey Jones, two locomotives. There's two locomotives that are going to bump. Casey said, 
just before he died, there were two more roads that he wanted to ride. The fireman said, what can they be? It's the Southern Pacific and the Santa Fe. Mrs. Jones sat on her bed of sign, just received the message that Casey was dying. Said, go to bed, chillin' and hush your crying, cause you got another popper on the Salt Lake Mine. Mrs. Casey Jones got another popper, Mrs. Casey Jones on the Salt Lake Mine. Mrs. Casey Jones got another popper, got another popper on the Salt Lake Mine. <laughs> 